The comedian Rosie O'Donnell is back on daytime television as a co-host of ABC's The View. And she's as outspoken as ever, especially when it comes to the often forgotten victims of Hurricane Katrina. What comes to those victims, she's doing what the government couldn't or wouldn't do. We travel with Rosie O'Donnell to Louisiana. Seven months ago, Nightline went to Baton Rouge to investigate what life was like for 3,000 survivors of Katrina. The ones who landed in the nation's largest ever refugee camp, Renaissance Village. What we discovered was mostly silence and despair. Of the 600 or so children who lived there, only about 100 were registered for school. For the little kids, there was nothing to do. No swings, no playground. There were three trailers purchased by Rosie O'Donnell to house a daycare center, early head start, and even a computer lab. Come here, just let me, let's go look and see where, I mean, it's there, you can see it. Yeah. They're right there. They'd been sitting there since December, but it had been halted at the front gates by FEMA, and what many saw is a perfect little picture of the big FEMA problem, an overwhelmed bureaucracy unable to make even simple things work. We decided it was time to go back and see whether anything had gotten better. From some angles, things look pretty much the same. Still 575 trailers, still only 100 or so kids heading to school in the morning. Come on, girls, come on! Knowing they'll return to a place that still doesn't feel like home. But for Miss Annie J. Ford, much has changed since she walked 40 blocks through chest-high water to escape the flood. <coughs> She was the oldest resident of Renaissance Village. She is now the oldest former resident. At 98, she's no longer living in a tiny trailer with her 77-year-old cousin. They have their own apartment. Miss Annie is a believer in the power of prayer. I said, Lord, please send somebody by here to give me somewhere for so I could be happy. And that was about 30 minutes. For somebody knocked on my door. How did Miss Annie's prayers get answered? Well, when Rosie O'Donnell couldn't get those trailers in through the front gates, she decided to help get at least some of the people out. But that's just the start of the story. Last Friday, Rosie O'Donnell took me to meet Miss Annie and see what had become of those infamous trailers. As we sit here flying to Baton Rouge, did you think this day would come? I had hoped it would come. I thought it would be sooner. O'Donnell says after 9-11, she wrote millions of dollars of checks to charity, but saw few results. So she created her own SWAT team in a foundation she founded called For All Kids. You know, when I was a kid, I thought if I got rich and famous, I would get a magic wand. And what would I do with the magic wand? Well, first I'd fix my mom. She had cancer and I didn't want her to die. So I thought I would magic wand my mother and, and then I would, you know, magic wand away child abuse and I'd magic wand away kids dying from guns and you know I got to be at the height of, of my fame and fortune in America and I was like I got the wand but it doesn't work. But when Katrina struck Rosie's foundation was ready to act when the government it seemed was not. The fact that Americans in this country were sitting on roofs in flooded waters with dead bodies for day after day after day that we were able to watch it on television, and yet the White House response was, we didn't know. It seemed to me totally unbelievable. So a few months after the hurricane, Rosie headed to Renaissance Village. She remembers her first impressions. By the time I was there, it was uh, after the first of the year, so it had been months, and I was shocked and stunned. It looked like a prison yard. You know, even in prisons, they have running tracks. They have exercise gyms. But here was, you know, fenced-in area, trailer after trailer after trailer, with people sitting tired, vacant eyes, on wooden homemade porches, two feet by three feet, with toddler babies playing in the dirt with no swings. It looked like an emergency trauma room for people who were emotionally dead. And uh, it was unbearably heartbreaking to me. And then we developed a plan on how to make a renaissance village into more of a community than an internment camp. Getting Miss Annie into an apartment was only part of her plan. She has moved three other families into new apartments, bought six cars to help people get to their jobs. Today, we're headed to see the community plaza that will serve everyone, 
a home base for a wide range of social services, along with a sprawling playground for all the kids. The foundation has spent nearly $3 million here. So that's why, you know, going back today, and then I'm so happy that we get to go back today when it's finished, you know. Well, isn't this a little bit better than just two trailers? It's pretty hot. Hey, how are you? Our first visit will be with Miss Annie. Annie, they, they travel together so they don't forget their name. Annie and Annie. Annie and Annie. What does having Rosie here mean to you? Oh my God, I, she means everything to no. me. She means this was the everything. everything. When you're 100, we're having a big party. All right. yeah. But today, the party is for the kids. And this time, the visit to Renaissance Village is filled with color and laughter, thanks to Rosie's new community square. <laughs> hey, buddy. We begin in the trailer used to house a new early Head Start program. Thank you. It looks beautiful in here, Thank it really you. does. How many Full kids of life. You know, so how many kids do you think you'll have? 64. Did you just say 64? We have 64 kids. Before the day is over, Rosie O'Donnell has bent down, hugged, kissed, and high-fived her way through this new community square, which she and an enormous team of volunteers have created. Well, let's hear it for the staff, ladies and gentlemen. Elizabeth Birch, the head of her foundation, takes us on the tour. Unreal, babies everywhere. Oh, gosh. I need another one. We're planning for 40 new babies. And we're able to accommodate right, every child up through all the early Head Start and Head Start. So what's been happening to them before this? They've been sitting in trailers, just pining away. It's been horrible. And here it is, at last, Hi. one of the trailers stuck idle for 10 months. When you think about it, how we, many kids it serves now? FEMA was paralyzed by a federal statute that says you can't build anything permanent, so we built a Lego set. And you can literally dismantle this in under 60 days. We complied with the statute, and once we did that, they said, oh, all right. So this is a model. I mean, Rosie has enabled a model to be created. So next time it shouldn't take eight months. Oh, next time it should take eight days. Here's hoping. There are facilities for adults here, too. It's where people could come and learn what it is they need to do to get out of here. And Job counselors, exactly. mortgage counselors, substance abuse counseling. Cynthia, <laughs> she just told me over a hundred different organizations will be able to come here to provide support. Tell the truth. If you'd waited long enough with FEMA to come up with this, <laughs> that's why we have Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The ribbon was cut, <laughs> and the kids took over. But we wondered, what did FEMA think about all this? John Bird is the director of FEMA's Baton Rouge field office. He's been on the job for three months. If it hadn't been for Rosie O'Donnell, if it were just left up to FEMA, would this playground exist? Well, I, I think not because of statutory limitations under the Stafford Act, which funds and empowers FEMA. Um, we're glad to work with uh, charitable organizations and organizations like Rosie's. I know that uh, my seniors and FEMA value this and want to see it uh, repeated uh, uh, in future disasters. So, but repeated uh, by the government or repeated by other volunteer uh, groups? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I just don't have an answer for that. Why did it take so long? Uh, Cynthia, I don't know. I, I wasn't here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not well versed in the history of all this. Do you think FEMA has something to learn from Rosie O'Donnell? She sort of did what the government wouldn't or couldn't do. Well, couldn't. And didn't. Well, couldn't. But many believe FEMA could have done much more to help people get back on their feet, even under the present law. As for Rosie, she says she's not here trying to embarrass anyone. My goal is not to shame anyone or the government or FEMA. My goal is to say we can all do better and we must. And let's prepare ourselves for when and if this happens again. FEMA tells us there are no plans at this point to close Renaissance Village, though other such camps are being shut down. As for Rosie, who is a host of The View here on ABC, she tells us she plans to go to Washington to share the model her foundation has developed with Congress.